Grace, mercy, and peace be multiplied unto you from God, our Heavenly Father, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Today we have two gospel readings. And that can lead to some um, ambiguity. What's he going to preach on? What's the emphasis going to be? Are we going to be happy? Hosanna happy? Or are we going to be crucify him hostile and uh, reflective and repentant, penitential? Because as you know, not in a literal sense, but in a theological sense, which is probably more important than literal, it was our voices, our sins, our hands that took the hammer or whatever they used to pound in the nails of the Lord Jesus. We're the ones in the crowd saying, crucify him, crucify him. So we have two tracks this morning. Two tracks this morning. I'm going to share with you something that Jane and I are looking forward to. Back in uh, October, before even before I got the call to serve here as an intentional interim pastor at your uh, wonderful faith family here in El Centro, uh, we planned a trip. My wife, uh, Jane, served for three years as director of International Friendship House, a ministry of your church, the Lutheran Church, to international students uh, at Arizona State University in Tempe, where, where we live. And she... Uh, uh, served them and I set up tables and chairs I guess I served them too okay but not like she did and we kind of formed some friendships with some of the kids uh, from all over the world many of uh, many of who quite frankly were from Asia <coughs> so this one young man completed his masters and while he was at ASU he uh, went back home and married uh, his girlfriend and brought her over here, and uh, then he graduated, and he got a job uh, in San Jose. A lot of the Asian students and graduates go to Silicon Valley up in Northern California, and uh, uh, while he worked there for a short while, he ended up having um, visa problems. They all do. You can only work so long, and then you have to scoot unless you get a company that sponsors you. Um, that happened to him. They had a baby, and anyway, we got kind of close to them. So um, in a couple of weeks, we're going to go to Japan and see them and stay with them, and uh, never been to Asia before, and um, see Mount Fuji, eat sushi. <laughs> what else is important? And here's my point. They have this fast train over there, a bullet train. Have you been there? Sid, you've been to there. Have you taken the bullet train? Is it fast? On second thought, <laughs> no, it really sounds exciting. In fact, last night, when I should have been studying the sermon, I Googled bullet train in Japan. They have some YouTube there, and it is really fast. It is really fast, and it runs on a track. We're on two tracks this morning. Two tracks, the processional track of Jesus entering in Jerusalem, which is a happy track, and maybe we should focus on that. I mean, we like good news. Christianity should have more joy. You want more joy in your heart. Hmm? But then there's that second track, which quite frankly is the most more important track. And that's the track that what happens to Jesus when he gets into Jerusalem. When he gets into Jerusalem. The processional track is a setup track. Anybody here golf? It's a cruel sport, isn't it? It's a cruel sport. You spend a lot of time golfing and setting up. Hmm? So you get to the tee box, and then when it's your turn, you wait your turn, you set up. You put the tee in the ground, you take some practice swings, you do some stretches, you survey the target area. You never land there, at least I never do. Okay. And then you take a whack at the ball. You execute the shot. The setting up is important, but it's not the most important. It's the execution of the shot. I like to give another example. I think this one works. It's actually biblical. It's like a bride and her wedding. A br we have a wedding coming up in our family, the first one. Um, looking forward to it. It's going to be a small affair, which is good. We're not, we don't have any experience at this. Uh, seeing one of your children married, okay. But anyway, Kara, Matthew's fiance, is spending a lot of time, and so is Matthew, setting things up. Hmm? 
They got the ring, they've got the venue where they want to be married, they got the venue where they want to have the reception, they made invitations, they got the photographer lined up. My hunch is Kara's looking for a dress. She's probably gonna, well, we know she's gonna get her hair done the day before, so all this thing is setting up. And on Friday evening, April 22nd, it's gonna be a busy month for us, uh, she's gonna walk down the aisle, a procession, a happy moment, but that isn't the important part. The important part is the public exchange of the promises between those two. You can get married without uh, witnesses, but it's, it's helpful to have, well, the government demands witnesses. So they're going to exchange their promises to be man and wife to each other for a better, for worse, richer, for poor, as long as they both shall live. And the exchange of the vows, the commitment, is what's important. So my text this morning is on track or from track number two. What does Jesus do when he gets into Jerusalem? It's fun, it's important, it's appropriate to say, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. But what's really important is to understand what Jesus does and appropriate it. I know that's a big word. I can't think of a better one. Appropriate what Jesus does for yourself because it has huge, real benefits. And to make the mistake of not appropriating to yourself what Jesus did and what did Jesus do. I showed the kids and I show you. He died on the cross, voluntarily. Some thought he was a criminal, but he wasn't a criminal. He died on the cross voluntarily for you and for me. To bring us back in relationship with the holy God who can't tolerate sin. And that's important. You don't want to spend your existence in conflict with the holy God. You want to find some way to get right with God. Because God is the one who brought you life in the first place and right now you're looking at a grave. You're looking at your mortality. In fact, things are even worse. You're looking at an eternity separated from God who is love and light and all those good things. So the cross event is very, very important. It ushers in the kingdom of God, which is not one of rebels against a holy God, but one of reconciliation. And there's only one person who could do that, and that was the God-man, Jesus. goes back to the Christmas story when the angels were in the sky and they said to the shepherds, when they said to the shepherds, uh, do not be afraid, for I come to bring you good tidings, for unto you t today is born in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And they all burst out into song, singing Gloria in excelsis Deo, glory to God in the highest, and peace on earth among men of goodwill. Are you a man of goodwill? Are you a woman of flexibility and in touch with reality that you're in big trouble, that we're in big trouble, sinner and a holy God, and we want to be part of this kingdom of mercy and justice. There's a lot of news these days about Donald Trump. I know what you're thinking right now. Oh, please spare me. Okay. Please spare me. 99% of the globe is critical of Donald Trump because of the way he handles himself, I guess. I mean, I'm going to try to put this in my own words. Okay. He's vulgar. He's mean. He's inconsistent. We're all Donald Trumps. That's my point. We're all Donald Trumps. We're all in disfavor with God. We're all mean. You don't look mean this morning. You look like really decent folks. And you are. But you're also Donald Trump. Jesus on the cross erases that for us. My text is what? Verse 47 of Luke chapter 23. 
of the second track where the centurion says, certainly this man, this man on the Lord Jesus, this man, the Lord Jesus on the cross is innocent, and he is. And you are too. What? You just called me Donald Trump. And now you're saying I'm innocent. For the sake of the first man who is innocent, you are innocent. That's what the second track is all about. That's what this week is all about. The cross event which reconciles the Donald Trumps of this world, which is all of us, with the Holy God. You're now in a different kingdom. You're extracting yourself from the kingdom of meanness and selfishness. You'll be fighting with that till you get to the grave. But you're in a different kingdom. Do you not know, St. Paul writes, that those of you who have been baptized have been baptized into his death. And even as Christ was buried, so you are too. And even as he rose on the third day, next Sunday's event, you too are innocent and rise to newness of life. I don't want to spoil your first day of Holy Week, but there is some newness needed to be done around here. There are some old, outworn attitudes and behaviors which really need to go. What are you talking about, Pastor Gary? Well, I'm not going to get too specific, but I think we all should take an inventory of ourselves and say, now that I too am innocent, by virtue of my faith, my baptismal faith, I'm a new person, to take a spiritual inventory and start leaving those bad behaviors and attitudes, right? Because you're in a different kingdom. We're in a different kingdom. And you want as much of heaven now before you get there. So I close by inviting you to appropriate those words that the centurion meant for Jesus to yourself. Because it's true. By virtue of your baptismal faith, you too are no longer Donald Trump. Whew. And you, and you rise to newness of life. You watch your tongue. You abandon laziness. You're more forgiving. You don't hold grudges because you forgave. You reach out to others. Certainly, you are an innocent, not calling you Jesus, you're in Jesus, an innocent man. God, give us a blessed Holy Week. Help us to immerse ourselves in this wonderful message and reality of living in a different the kingdom of God. Mercy.